now maybe we can go into like the challenges faced or like any advice for anyone interested to start a career in football. So the first question I have for you is what were some of the challenges you faced or observed in your career? So I think in general, the biggest thing, because I'm also a female, it's um, females in the football industry and also in other sports. I think sometimes are either underappreciated or, or underrepresented. So like two years ago, I wanted to intern at Chinese Super League. And despite the fact that I had a close connection with a person who already working there, he, he was a referee, but the head still said that they don't hire a female like a step in administrative roles. So it's just my connection at the league. He believed that the male interns are actually not that great. It's definitely not the same level as me. So it's just, you know, the underlying thoughts of the higher ups, it's just that females are not strong enough. You know, there's, it's just more so like a burden. Like if we travel together, there's more to worry about. It just, they don't want any inconvenience. So it just putting that kind of stereotypes on females. But I but it's like that kind of thought. They thought, oh, we are protecting you because you know the, those work are gonna be tough or tiring or just difficult for females. So we we want you to stay out of it. But actually I feel like that's a way to underestimate my ability. <laughs> yeah, it was very sad. I actually cried after, you know, oh being God, no. because of him. Yeah, it's it was a stressful time too, but still it just it's it's hard to accept that, you know, sometimes you are rejected just because of the gender. You know, it's I mean it's an issue everywhere. It's just it varies diff- um, from regions to regions, but it's still an issue, a, a right. big challenge, I think. Right, right. I mean, was there any way you overcame that? obstacle of like this um, gender stereotype? Yes, I actually also learned some, I also have some advice from um, other females who are already pretty successful in the industry. Like she is a uh, communication director at um, Baron Meek. So she told me that I also very much agree to it myself. Like when I'm interacting with other people in the industry is you, you have to kind of have a firm voice maybe like in real life actually in real life i'm a very easygoing person like i am pretty mellow but like in a work setting maybe you just have a different personality have a firm personality voice and then showing people what you're talking about like to show your professionalism and just no compromise on a lot of things i mean unfortunately you kind of have to do that to establish you know your role and also, I feel like maybe sometimes it's not like um, going with the flow with the stereotype. It's more so like finding your fit. Maybe in some environment, in some roles, they just don't really welcome females. I feel like if you just have to go into it just against all the people, it might not even, it might not be that well. So maybe find a role that actually female will turn out to be more advantaged you know, just to find your right role, I think that's also important, you know, to approach a problem strategically. Yeah, there's a very good point. Like, sometimes there's no point, like, if you can't win the battle, like, find somewhere else where your talents will be appreciated. Yeah, yeah, right, that's right. correct. Yeah. Okay, and um, how would you recommend someone who is new to, like, the sports management or sports field to enter the industry? Yeah, I feel like as long as you keep up to date with the news and then what happens in the sports industry, actually a lot of skills are transferable because sports, for example, a sports team needs communication team, you know, operation team, uh, marketing and finance, all sorts of stuff. So a lot of skills are transferable, but just keep an eye on the news and what's happening in the industry. And then there's actually some platform resources I recommend. So Sports Business Journal is definitely a very good um, good platform. It just gives you very detailed news. I mean, there's also other like countless platform for sports news like Bleacher Report, uh, Athletics. And also um, there's actually 
an educational platform that they interview athletes and talk with people who are in the sports industry is called the, the boardroom. I think that's a very good resource that I went to one of their sessions with uh, Kevin Durant. And um, it just, you can learn a lot of uh, insider views. And also another, um, just, we have a classmate. She's also a, a sports management student at NYU. She started her own podcast called Adventures with Aggie. So she, she interviewed people it could be athletes or people who are in sports industry, like involved in different ways. She um, interviews them and then Apple on Spotify. So that's something like, if you don't have the opportunity to get a degree in it, maybe there's those ways you can learn more about like the, the insights in the st industry. So I don't think, yeah, I just don't think, you know, degree is necessarily like required. It's definitely not. Right. Thanks so much for sharing all the resources. Do you have like any other advice you have for someone interested to start a career in like football or sports? Yeah, I think what I did is I by participating in events, you, you, you know, even volunteering. When I was in high school, every time I went back to China, I just find people in my city like who are hosting games. I just take an interview, you know, I reach out to people myself. So I think by doing all that, you actually know more people who are already in the industry and share the same interests as you do. So by doing things together, I think that's more so like an organic connection. Mm -hmm. It's not that you just reaching out to people, just you, it's the, the, the purpose is very obvious. I feel that will be a more close connection than you know just plainly reaching out to people. So just don't hesitate to talk to people who are already in the industry. I think they're always um, willing to give advice and also just the fact that sports and football industry are very connection oriented. Like you have to know some people in order to, you know, really break into it. I mean, I mean I'm not saying you have to, but like, I think it's better to have some connection. Right, right, of course. Yeah. I mean, how do you find these uh, volunteer opportunities or event opportunities for those who are, you know, at home not knowing where to start? Yeah, so, um, so what I did is, I, it's, it's kind of like weird to say because I know, like, I know a lot of friends on Instagram. I just, you know, I just came across their profile. I know I think what they're doing, for example, my, some, a lot of my friends are freestyle players. I just think what they are doing are very cool and then I message them. So actually the friend who introduced me to, you know, the a lot of volunteer opportunities, a person, I didn't know him, but I just came across his profile was in high school. And then he just said, oh, do you want to join me as a staff member for the tournament? And then I actually, work there, um, work in the tournament two years in a row and then definitely mm -hmm. knew a lot of people in the industry. So I just actually don't hesitate to reach out people like who might help or who share the same interest. It's not always result oriented who might help you in the end and just, you know, just talk to more people. Right. I, I know this advice, it just might, might not sound like that concrete, but this, this is true. Like, you know, by talking to people, you know what might pop up, mm -hmm. like, are some common things you guys might be interested but to be honest like in terms of you know what kind of website to go to I actually don't know because I I never really done things like that way but mm -hmm. I'm sure if you know always maybe go to the uh, events that interest you their website they always I think they always have volunteer opportunities too and also search for nonprofits. like I think there's always going to be resources. You just, you just don't limit yourself. And then if you are interested in something, you just search for it. And then the results might uh, surprise you. All right. All right. So either search online for nonprofits or just slide into people's DMs. Yeah, it, it might sound, sounds creepy. I now think about it. It sounds very <laughs> creepy. I, at the time, I don't think Instagram is very... Uh, dms not that popular but like i i just commented on his post now think about it but <laughs> so like i just when i was younger maybe i was just more so um i didn't think about it that much <laughs> now we're in a digital age now it's fine yeah, right? yeah it's fine no worry <laughs> yeah it's just, just like, slide oh, into the dms the DM, they commented me and then or they just slide into my dm i wouldn't really judge them 
so don't worry. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, one last thing. Is Passion FC offering or any internships or any career opportunities that you can share with the audience? Yes, definitely. So, like I said before, we we are have like we are um, we have twelve interns right now this semester. So we are our um founder actually like he answered this question himself because I had to show him uh the the questions beforehand and he said always like we always welcome like applicants or people who are looking for like experiences in this kind of field or more importantly people who share the same passion and interest of help helping the movement how, how can they go go on to apply yeah you, again you can slide into our dm <laughs> or, or like <laughs> contact us through our email or because sometimes we may not have like applications like a uh, job description out there on linkedin or something like that but just always don't hesitate to reach out like slide into our dms like or just email us i i think we will at the end provide our emails addresses and then yeah, that's it. It just just reach out to us if there's no postings on the website. Right, right. Do you have to be in the US to apply or can you work no, from anywhere? No, no, definitely not. Yeah, we have like interns and team members all across the globe. So it's it's not located, it's not an issue. Maybe just sometimes, you know, communication, it's a, a bit harder, but that's not a problem for us. You know, we welcome people around the world to join the movement to further our goal together. Right. That's awesome to hear. Okay, so yeah. you that anyone looking for internships can go and hit up Passion FC by sliding into their DMs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that kind of concludes like the career series episode one. So um, thank you everyone for tuning in to our career series brought to you by Soccer Girl Girls and Passion FC. Um, as mentioned at the start of the interview, we hope that this series can show people that playing football and having a passion for football can provide opportunities for you both within and also beyond football. So thank you so much. And thanks, Lucy, for joining us today. Thank and you guys. All and your stories. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so always if anyone has questions for me, just please feel free to DM me. Slide <laughs> my DM. I, I, it's like all kind of questions are welcome. I'm happy to answer any questions and help everybody who are who in need of my advice. Right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, thank you guys. <laughs>